Good morning. Nice to see you again. I'm going to explain the plan for the week and then we're going to do two things today. One is the completion of my introduction to Wikipedia, its history and the main evolution. The second thing will be more in-class activities that will count towards your participation grade. One will be more generic, another more specific. So, of the plans, of the points that you find under Monday for week 11, point one is all we will be doing today, and I will talk about how the powerful example of the French encyclopedia from the 18th century contains some of the foundational elements of Wikipedia and its manifesto, its mission. Continue reading the texts, the chapters from the third and last textbook, Wikipedia at 20. That text is available online. You'll find the link inside the syllabus and uh, every chapter can be downloaded for free as a PDF. Let me know if you encounter any issues. On Wednesday, I will continue with the introduction by showing you screenshots and talking about the interface, the main components of Wikipedia, because there is a lot beyond just the articles that goes on in Wikipedia. And we'll focus both this week and next week on the editor and the software, which is Media Wiki, and the coding, even though we will not do any coding ourselves as an assignment, but I want you to be able to compare, uh, especially this system of Media Wiki to the one we have used because it was more convenient to use, which is DocuWiki, and there are many similarities. On Friday, we will try to complete the program for the week, so I might take some points from Monday and add them to Friday, but I would also resume watching at least segments from videos on Wikipedia. I will also be talking about the final exam. I want to go through the details of the final exam, how many questions, what are the areas to consider for those questions and how to prepare for the final exam. In general, let me add in lieu of a formal announcement that I haven't started reviewing your assignments on DocuWiki and also the messages that you send me, the mails that you send me with the summary of your ideas for the final project, which I'll do during the week, but a lot is going on. I'm the chair of the search committee for a position in Arabic. Uh, the application just closed and we have almost a hundred applications to review uh, to, to get to a short list. So I'm trying to balance a lot of things, but those things are not forgotten. I'll go, I'll, I'll get to them. And of course, if you need to have a prompt, a quick response to what ideas you laid out for your project in order to proceed farther, you can ask me directly after the class. You can come to my office on Mondays and Wednesdays from noon to 1 p.m. Or you can come on Zoom Tuesdays and Thursdays for 30 to 6 p.m. or any other afternoon during the week. You can try and schedule a uh, meeting with me to discuss the project. Don't, don't wait too long if you're waiting for some kind of okay or formal approval on your project before you can proceed. The assignments as usual for this part, last part of the semester, there are no uh, written works, assignments that are due and it's just readings, but work on your final project. Don't postpone, don't wait until the last moment. It is not the kind of project you can do the last night 
uh, of the day before when, when the deadline expires okay and you also have keep in mind you also have a presentation at the end of the semester starting with May 2nd so you need to have at least a prototype at least a part of the project ready for that presentation because the presentation is very much a show and tell as you saw under Monday I've added the points that I was showing in class last week to a separate page in Notion. I converted that page in DocuWiki to a page in Notion. So in here you find all the links that I went through and that you may want to review yourself, at least summarily, at least the first few paragraphs. And you know also that some are more important, for example, under five, the so-called manifesto of Wikipedia, what Wikipedia <coughs> is not. <coughs> I added some figures in here that I couldn't find during my presentation last week and this is the number that I was looking for uh, and I updated it as of yesterday these uh, data are updated daily by Wikipedia and you can compare that there is a slight increase in the number of users between 7 and 8 percent up to 43 million users but look at how the number of users with a registered account who were actively editing Wikipedia article during the last 30 days has remained constant or is subject to slight decreases depending on the period. So in 2000, in 2019, the number was slightly above 130,000 in 2020 it was slightly below 130,000 and yesterday it was 127,000 so a lot of accounts but not too many people are really active so the community of the so-called Wikipedians the editors those who moderate uh, who make the revisions or engage in discussions about changes of the articles are a relatively small group so <clears throat> the idea of crowdsourcing was stronger in digital culture at the beginning of Wikipedia and through the 2000s the early 2010s from 2014 on there has been a decline <clears throat> you can find a specific article about Wikipedians keep in mind in case you don't know this that a large number of changes are made through across wikipedia versions so jo not just in the english version of wikipedia but across the 290 language versions of wikipedia by bots <coughs> bots that go through the text and find missing links find typos find other kinds of inaccuracies some bots also are programmed to look at the english version of wikipedia which usually has the longest most elaborate articles see if any data or information is missing in the other version the other language version of wikipedia <coughs> and they try to add that which is possible because of the coding the way the data is coded allows for basic data especially numbers and other objective content to be transported into another language it's an interesting uh, culture uh, to have a hybrid community essentially where humans and bots are participating and especially during the late 2010s bots were responsible for the introduction of new articles even translated from one version from one language to another or new articles new entries in wikipedia based on external repositories for example the cia has this beautiful website with data about every country every political government 
uh, on the planet and bots were made to transport information from those articles into geographical and social political entries in Wikipedia in English and in other versions. During the 2010s, things got even more complicated because you saw that you might have bots who were kept active after their makers, after the users who created those bots ceased to have an account with Wikipedia or even died. And therefore, during the 2010s, regulations and policies were added to supervise the activity of those bots. Same thing that you can, what you can guess from these low numbers of active users is that, in fact, the community of Wikipedians, of active Wikipedia editors and contributors, is not very diverse, both in terms of ethnic and racial composition and also in terms of uh, gender, right? There is a, a large majority of white males who contribute to Wikipedia articles and are active in the community. We saw that <clears throat> nowadays a lot of articles allow for someone, even someone who is not registered, to try and make changes. Those changes, however, will remain pending until they're reviewed and approved by a, an editor or a moderator. Uh, in the beginning, however, there was complete freedom. Anyone could change anything in an article, and the changes would be published, which is something that was proved in the College Humor uh, Professor Wikipedia video that we saw last week. That started to change uh, midway through the first decade of the 2000, from 2006 on. And one of the famous incidents that prompted the change from complete openness, complete freedom, to supervision of changes requiring people to create an account originated from this Sagan Thaler incident. And again, you can click on this you see that this is a Wikipedia article which provides all the information you need to know about this and additional details. Essentially, the incident originated from an attempt to vandalize Wikipedia. Uh, ultimately, uh, after a few months, the person who was responsible for this change was identified, not brought to court simply because the victim of his prank or vandalism, a journalist decide not to press charges, but uh, this man lost his job, was fired from the company, then was uh, rehired uh, at uh, the request of the journalist who pleaded on his behalf with the company that he be rehired. But uh, what prompted this incident was that in an attempt to show exactly that Wikipedia was not secure, was not stable, was not therefore reliable or trustworthy, an average individual, not, not a journalist or an expert in anything, changed the biographical article for this famous uh, journalist who has since died to introduce the interesting fact that he was uh, suspected to have been involved in the assassination of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy in November 1963. This change was spotted in a matter of weeks. Of course, uh, it, it could be considered slanderous and, and therefore subject even to a lawsuit. Uh, the journalist reacted by communicating this forgery, this false, uh, this fake news uh, to Wikipedia, and Wikipedia, of course, had that rectified, and a process of thinking by the end of that year led to changes in the amount of freedom that was uh, allowed uh, for the 
any user, even unregistered users, especially in reference to the biographical articles of living individuals, which is something that uh, even now is, sub is, is one of the subject of controversies between inclusionists and deletionists, with a lot of people saying that there shouldn't be articles on living people. And if you look, you may find some of your professors at Stony Brook, uh, whether they are particularly famous in academia or not, who have a Wikipedia page, for example. So there are a lot of biographical entries in Wikipedia for which the controversy revolves around the concept of notability. Is a scholar who is active in research uh, in their field notable enough to have their own Wikipedia page or not, and the same goes for uh, journalists, celebrities, politicians of all levels, right? No one disputes that leaders uh, at the local or, or state or federal level should have a page, but again, even for politicians, you may find a councilman in a local township with a Wikipedia page. Is that person, that individual, notable enough or not. Whether or not what you find in the article is actually factual. One of the most interesting pages on Wikipedia, which once again is an internal policy document, and you recognize that because you have Wikipedia followed by a column, no spaces, right? This is an internal policy, policy and guideline document and uh, one of the most interesting pages on Wikipedia is the list of hoaxes. Now, the hoaxes themselves can be the result of vandalism. Uh, someone has created a page or has added some key information to an existing valid entry that is fake. So it could be an entire fake entry or it could be some relevant fake information added to a perfectly valid uh, Wikipedia article. This is not, believe it or not, simply the result of digital culture in general and the epidemics of what is called fake news. Because even in the past, especially during the 19th century, but sometimes going back to the Renaissance, you can find fake entries in a book that has the format of a dictionary or an encyclopedia. That is to say, it was kind of an inside joke among experts working in some areas to be able to falsify an entry, the entry for a word that didn't exist for the Oxford English Dictionary. And the Oxford English Dictionary has had such fake entries up until the 1960s, at least. So. It was a long tradition through the various revisions and uh, printed versions of the Oxford English Dictionary. Encyclopedias, even prestigious encyclopedias, have had some fake entries or fake information added as a prank by people working there, challenging the other experts to find out what had been falsified. This phenomenon was relatively small, it appears to be bigger on a larger scale on Wikipedia, but it isn't. Because you have to keep in mind that you find almost 6.5 million entries in Wikipedia. So you still have this as an endemic small phenomenon. The page begins by warning you that this page should not be used to create other fake entries. It starts by reminding users of the proper policies, so you find the warning icon, please do not attempt to create new hoaxes on Wikipedia, here is why, and you know from these, you are reminded uh, from uh, these sections that Wikipedia intends to be a community first, or rather a movement, that is to say a community with a mission, with a goal which is to uh, accumulate knowledge that 
will be transmitted to the next generation, will be constantly revised, updated, expanded in the future, which was also the foundational idea of the French Encyclopedia, as we will see. And that's why you have the relationship, the strong cultural relationship between the French Encyclopedia of the 18th century and Wikipedia itself. Now, let me go back to the list of boxes. Um, I think you should be able to follow, right? Should be big enough. And there you have it. Maybe I need to make it smaller, otherwise you won't be able to see enough. This is the table of hoaxes. Can be organized based on any one of these headings. And the, the most interesting aspect is the length column, which uh, shows you for how long a fake entry or some fake information within a valid article went undetected before it was identified and corrected. So, and this is changing, right? The last, uh, the last time I taught this class, it was 2020, so this particular hoax was not even there on this table. So this uh, new hoax that has taken the lead in terms of length, it's about a fictitious tap dancer uh, uh, who uh, allegedly was working in New York in the 1890s, and it was introduced in 2005, which is kind of the golden era of uh, Wikipedia, when thousands of new entries were added every day. And it went undetected for more than 16 years. It was detected on August of 2021. And you find the length of the article. Many of these articles are not particularly long. And you can find a link that takes you to the discussion about the article. Of course, this discussion is closed because the article was deleted, was removed. But it's interesting because you find the process uh, clarified through which the community, the contributors came to the conclusion and came to the consensus that this article was fake and needed to be removed. So some of the basic things that you could expect, Google web search for the name of this alleged artist only finds references that are mirrors. So they're based on Wikipedia itself or translations in other languages of this Wikipedia article. So those searches for his purported teacher Damiano Tutador. So there are also other individuals mentioned there that uh, for which there is no evidence. There are other names that don't come out uh, with, with many hits. Uh, someone noticed, noted that the New York Times, which goes back to the, the 1890s, uh, doesn't contain, doesn't include any reference to such artists, which is hard to believe because it's not just about the articles that you may find in the New York Times, but the New York Times of that period would have included announcements or ads for the shows uh, offered in the city and the main artists. WorldCat is the catalog of all online catalogs of books, and therefore on WorldCat you find all the libraries all over the world who have books about a certain subject, subject or by a subject. Nothing in uh, any library uh, with, with references to the alleged autobiography, solo of a tap dancer by that guy. And Eight Books is a vintage uh, bookseller, which is now owned by Amazon, where you can find vintage books being sold in a variety of countries, no copies of that autobiography, etc., etc. So, um, and 
In fact, you find instead an episode, a famous episode on, of Seinfeld where Eduardo Corocho was mentioned by Elaine. Okay, I don't know if you guys, maybe uh, no one here has ever seen Seinfeld, but uh, it, it was a great series. And I'm sure whoever created that fake entry wanted to make a joke of that kind. And again, you can find many other examples. An article about the main character in a fictitious series of novels that went undetected until March of this year, March 31st. So we're talking about 11 days ago. A fictitious traveler undetected until September of last year, etc., etc. Okay? So you can see that you, you can go uh, from the table of contents to articles or to claims inside a valid article, for example, uh, the shape of the pyramid at the Louvre to simplify window washing, falsification in the past were made about the history of the Beatles, the English band from the 1960s, etc., etc. Very interesting to examine. I'll go back. One of the most famous hoaxes and one to, on, on which you find an uh, uh, entire article uh, is the hoax created by a, a class at an American university, at George Mason University of all places. Uh, they created a website called The Last American Pirate, which was interesting, well made. And that page on The Last American Pirate, created on a free website, was the result of the work throughout the semester of an entire class studying Wikipedia and similar media. In order to have fake supporting evidence about this alleged pirate who would have been operational in the Italian, in the American Northeast uh, at the end of the 19th century, they even created fake YouTube videos purporting to be uh, showing archaeological evidence, such as the house and the gravesite of the pirate, and interviews with two professors. Those YouTube videos are still there. The site, lastamericanpirate.net, was removed because uh, year after year, professor, the, the, the professor uh, suffered a lot of backlash. He, he was sanctioned by the university, he was warned not to attempt anything like that, and practically they, they let him understand that it would be beneficial for his career not to leave traces of this, even though the fame of this hoax has remained alive. So that site is not um, active anymore, and I had to remove another link. The last time I, ta I taught the class, there was another page that had um, taken the content of lastamericanpirate.net and that page also is now gone. But the YouTube videos are there. They're not particularly convincing. Uh, they're about a few minutes each. You can see them on YouTube, as I said. Mm. The interviews are kind of funny uh, because, of course, clearly Lorraine Smith is a student, not a professor, a student in the class who pretends to be a professor and she's herself amused. She's trying not to laugh at the beginning of this interview. Uh, professor Theodore McCord is played by another professor at George Mason University pretending to be an expert uh, on this. But it's interesting to compare the success this hoax had because clearly the class, this uh, group of students at George Mason University had been studying throughout the whole semester what makes an entry in Wikipedia be accepted and uh, how to have a prank like this be successful. So it was the result of some higher level expertise on Wikipedia itself. It is interesting to compare this 
to a similar attempt that was made four years later on Reddit. On Reddit, someone opened a discussion which has now been, well, the main entry has been removed. The discussion is still there. Let me show you. So if you click in here, you can see that the message to the community uh, that was based on a hoax was removed based on the policy of Reddit. The discussion itself stayed, remains there. And one after the other, you find people who are doubting the veracity of this hoax, which was in turn, similarly to what happened for the George Mason hoax, supported by a fake website with a combination of fake and real evidence. In this case, the original uh, message to the Reddit community claimed, let's see, let's put this, as you can gather from the title of this blog, I found things in the trunk. The original claim that is detailed in here was that someone found a trunk that belonged to uh, a relative of theirs who lived almost a hundred years earlier. And they found some strange documents and strange objects in the trunk that led them to believe that their relative could have been a serial killer from the period. And they included references to victims from the period. So there was some factual information. And those victims, some of those victims had entries in Wikipedia because that was factual information. Again, from that period, we're talking about 10 years ago, uh, the discussion about notability in Wikipedia has evolved in a different direction to the point where a lot of earlier entries about victims of killers and serial killers have been removed from Wikipedia because once again, those would contain factual information, those entries about the victims of serial killers or killers in general, but uh, the notability was questionable. And of course, there is a morbid curiosity component to this and considerations of safety and the well-being of the community in general that led the community in Wikipedia to take the decision that those kinds of entries should not be there. So you find some external evidence, right, in this. So this website is much longer than and, and has some additional information if you go here you find a few other entries. So there was some verifiable or allegedly external supporting, supporting evidence to this, yet from the very beginning, within 24 hours, this hoax was unmasked, was revealed. That is to say, a hoax on Wikipedia can last for months or even more than 10 years. And something like that, doesn't fly on Reddit. And again, you find articles about this that um, are interesting, but simplifying the discussion. The idea is that the culture of the Reddit community is different from the Wikipedia community. The timeline for review and discussion of an entry is almost immediate in the Reddit community. A message in, on the Reddit community either will have answers, responses within a few days or uh, none at all, whereas the time, the process in the Wikipedia community is more medium and long term. It may take weeks or months before any of the Wikipedians, any of the editors will review uh, an article and start a discussion or verify the search, the, the, the sources. There are other places discussing the hoaxes uh, of, of this professor. He tried another one and was shut down at that point. 
they really uh, went atomic on his career and threatened him. So that was the end of my introduction, and we have about 20 minutes, which should be enough for these activities. Now, these used to be group activities in the past, not individual activities. And if you're comfortable uh, with working with the people sitting next to you, you can submit this activity as a group. Otherwise, do it individually and submit an individual uh, email. Or you can send me the results of these activities via email, or you can open a Notion page and share the link with me open a Google Docs and share the link with me. The advantage to using Google Docs in this case, if it is a group activity, is that everyone can open the same page and everyone can write at the same time concurrently on that same page. So it's up to you. It can be individual, uh, individual uh, activity or uh, it can be a small group. By small group, I mean no more than three or four people, right? And you can work with someone next to you or you can move around because you know someone else in the class but they're not sitting next to you right now. Uh, feel free to organize. So I'll go through instructions for both so that we can then spend the rest of the class talk, uh, uh, working on this. Number one is very simple. A basic, a short discussion, don't waste too much time on this, on what you search on Wikipedia. Normally, what are your search patterns? Do you use Wikipedia? How often? And what is the kind of information you uh, are looking for? Something to support your readings for the classes, definitions, <coughs> topics that have to do with your major, with your courses, or anything else. And of course, if you do it as a group, whatever you send me should include the name of all the participants in the group. Let's look at number two, because number two is more involved. So let's look together at the instructions for uh, this one. So pick a page, any page you want. Shouldn't be too long, shouldn't be just a couple of paragraphs, especially if you're working as a group. And then we'll work on the links. We're looking at the links because those are the most important elements in any Wikipedia article. How many links are there in this article? That's why it shouldn't be uh, too long. Okay. And then how many of these are very specific, meaning a specific name, a specific place, a specific event, as opposed to more abstract link, right? The name of a person or a link to philosophy, a link to knowledge, right? That would be the, the highest level of abstraction. And you include those links, you take those links, you extract those links. So provide a number, but also a list. and a number. B is the most important part of this work. Even if you're not able to do everything, B and C are the most important. What is a flat link? Would be if you take the page uh, about Tom Cruise or Sean Connery, a flat link would be a link to another actor, right? An almost flat link would be a link to a director. We're talking about very similar levels. Whereas a vertical link would be a link in the direction of a hierarchy, of a pyramid of knowledge. So from Tom Cruise to cinema, or from Tom Cruise to actor, right? So Tom Cruise is an actor. Tom Cruise as an actor has done cinema, but you can see that we're going up vertically in the direction of, towards the top of the pyramid, okay? Include examples now of, of those links. And C is unidirectional or bidirectional links. Monodirectional, unidirectional links would be, for example, if you take the example of the actor Sean Connery who played 007 in the 1960s, would be a link that takes you from Sean Connery to the article on Protestantism, right? Sean Connery was religiously Protestant, but it's one direction, monodirectional, because 
if you read this article, you don't find a reference to Sean Connery. Clearly, an article on Protestant people and, and denominations don't include a list of all the people who uh, ascribe to that religion. A bidirectional link would be a link that goes in both directions from Sean Connery to the movie Goldfinger. And inside the article on Goldfinger, you find a link sending you back to Sean Connery. So remember the representation we made the last time, right? How starting from any place, you can go farther away or you can come back on the starting point again. And, and the, I've already mentioned, is the opposite of uh, A, right? Specific links, abstract link. So you have 15 minutes. Don't spend too much time on number one, maybe five minutes, because number two, the second activity, will require more time. These instructions are available under week 11, Monday, right? So find that also on your computer, tablet, or phone so that you can review the, the instructions because I cannot have all of the instructions at the same time on the screen and start working on that as an individual participant in the activity or as part of a small group of two or three people if you're comfortable working with people sitting next to you, okay? Call me or, or come here if you have questions about the activity. Place both activities in the same Google Docs or in the same email or in the same Notion page and share both at the same time at the end of this class, okay?